Antibiotics are an extremely hot topic in the United States today because of recent laws and changes to the way we can purchase and administer antibiotics to our livestock. A lot of this circles around the topic of antibiotic resistance, and I wanted to take some time today to talk to you about antibiotic resistance, what it is, what it isn't, and steps that you can take to ensure you don't help add to the problem. Stay tuned to find out more. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So there are lots and lots of questions out there about antibiotics. Are antibiotics good or antibiotics bad? And then we talk about antibiotic resistance. If you've been around any kind of medication for people or for livestock, chances are you've heard about antibiotic resistance. I wanted to talk with you a little bit today about what antibiotic resistance is and how you can do your part to help prevent it from occurring. This video is neither for nor against the use of antibiotics. That's not the point of me making this video. The point is to talk about antibiotic resistance. There is a time and a place most definitely for the use of antibiotics. And no matter how hard you try to prevent the need from arising, your animals can simply get a gastrointestinal infection. They can get a cut or a wound. Um, they can pick things up from the soil, just from general environmental exposure. So we want you to do the best that you can to prevent your animals from getting sick by doing things like keeping them healthy, keeping their water clean, keeping them in a clean environment. But you need to understand that you most definitely will at some point in time more than likely experience a situation where you do need to give your animal an antibiotic and that's okay. You just have to make sure that you do it in the correct manner in order to help do your part to prevent antibiotic resistance. So what is antibiotic resistance? Well, in a nutshell, antibiotic resistance occurs when bacteria are exposed to an antibiotic and from one reason to another, they don't actually die. They get exposed to a certain amount of antibiotic. And for some reason, a few of those bacteria actually survive. They actually make it through the exposure. And once you have a few of these culprits that survive and have been exposed to it, they tend to develop certain traits in their DNA that allow them to develop resistance. Now, once a bacteria becomes resistant to an antibiotic, they can actually share it with their friends. They have these little appendages that look like hairs that they can touch with other bacteria, and they can actually give them genetic coding that they need to become resistant. They can also utilize parts of other bacteria that perhaps have died, but have developed some type of resistance. There's lots and lots of ways that this happens, but as we roll through our topics today, you're gonna see a few common threads, and that is going Going to be overuse of antibiotics, inappropriate dosaging of antibiotics, and inappropriate types of antibiotics for specific infections. With that being said, let's get rolling into the video and talk more about antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics are a special classification of medications that are made to deal specifically with bacteria. Uh, we came into the antibiotic age full force back in the 19, late 1920s, early 1930s. And before the advent of antibiotics, millions and millions of people died annually from things like infections that were caused by bacteria that we could not previously treat. We started off with the antibiotic penicillin and then kind of moved forward from there. Now there are many, many different classes of antibiotics that you can give both humans and animals. The problem is, is we're starting to develop antibiotic resistance and there's a few specific ways that this is happening. The number one reason that we have started to see uh, antibiotic resistance is because individuals are treating animals and humans with antibiotics when they really don't need it. Again, we talk about how antibiotic treatment works against bacteria, but there's a lot of times that an individual will be given a 
medication or an animal will be given a medication when they don't actually need it. This would be if you have a individual or an animal that's suffering from a viral infection and you go ahead and give them antibiotics for that virus. Again, antibiotics don't work against viruses. So we're giving this animal a medication for an illness that they don't really need. So what can you do to help fight against this problem? Well, the main thing that you need to do is you need to learn how to do a basic veterinary wellness check. You need to be looking for things like, is this animal running a fever? Does this animal actually have a bacterial infection? You can look at the signs and symptoms that the animal is experiencing. You can bounce those against your veterinarian or against your veterinarian manual, and you can determine if the signs and symptoms are showing you that it's a bacterial infection. And if so, the next thing you would wanna do is treat that animal with a specific antibiotic to help treat that specific infection. And that's going to bring us to the next point, which is utilizing the right antibiotics for the specific type of infection that you are experiencing. Thanks for joining us again today. Thanks for watching our video. We greatly appreciate it. Just wanted to take a quick moment to remind you that we have other valuable information for you that you can find on Lanasa Farms website. That's at www.lanasafarms.com. Also, we have an online Facebook forum that you can join. We encourage you to check that out. That can be found by searching for Lanasa Farms Tack Box on Facebook. Again, that's Lanasa Farms Tack Box. Let's get back to the video. When we talk about giving the right antibiotic for the right illness, it's important to remember that not all antibiotics are created equal. That is to say, Say that certain antibiotics work in certain ways. So for instance, penicillin works by damaging the cell wall of a bacteria, where other antibiotics may focus on the individual processes that are developing inside the bacteria and keeps them from replicating. There are certain illnesses that require certain types of antibiotics to work properly. So for instance, if you had an animal with gangrene, penicillin might work really good for that, but it might not work really good for something else. On the flip side, if you have something like hoof rot, you may be able to use a antibiotic like Nuflor, which may work really good for that, whereas in penicillin might not work good for hoof rot at all. Then you get into the tetracyclines, which may work really well for a respiratory infection, but other medications may not work as well. So again, you have very specific medications that work for very specific bacteria. Now in healthcare, when we're dealing with patients, a lot of times we're able to do things like blood cultures. We would draw blood and we would look and we would see what kind of an infection is this individual dealing with or we would look at the infection itself and say, okay, chances are it's this or it's that. And we give very specific antibiotics for very specific types of infections. You're going to wanna do the same thing on your farm. Now, I know you can't likely do blood cultures without involving a veterinarian, and they may not do that either, but we need to narrow down the specific cause of the illness that we're having make sure we're doing our due diligence to look up what that is and make sure that we're giving the correct medication for the correct illness that we are experiencing that's very very important the next thing that this is going to lead us to is another cause of antibiotic resistance and that is are you giving the right dosage are you giving the right amount to your animal when you're giving them their antibiotic so we always want to make sure that we're giving the right dose in the right route for the right illness. So if you're giving a medication if such as penicillin or LA200 or Nuflor or Draxin or whatever, it's very important that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations or follow your veterinarian's recommendations. Chronically underdosing, not giving medications in the correct route, the correct dosage, helps lead to antibiotic resistance. So we really, really want to avoid this. You've experienced this before when you've gotten medications from your primary care provider and on the bottle it says, make sure that you complete this medication. If you underdose for bacteria, you can cause antibiotic resistance. So what do I mean by the right route? Well, if the injection, if it says it's calling for an intramuscular injection and you decide you're gonna give it subcutaneous, that is a problem, vice versa. If it calls for subcutaneous and you're giving it intramuscular, that could be a problem as well. 
Lots of people try to do things like give intramuscular uh, medications orally. They just don't work. You have to give it in the right route. You have to give the right dose and you have to give it for the right amount of time. That is very, very important. So make sure that you're following your manufacturer's directions. There are some old wives tales out there that will tell you things like, well, as long as you keep your animals confined uh, to a certain area and you keep their water clean, if you keep their bedding areas clean, if you put them out on pasture, if you do this or you do that with them, that somehow you're gonna magically prevent them from coming into contact with bacteria. There was recently a video out there where the gentleman said, oh, the only reason animals get sick is because they're uh, drinking dirty water. They're in dirty paddocks or something like that. And that's not necessarily true. While this does make a whole lot of sense, obviously the cleaner the environment, the cleaner the water, the more space these animals have to spread out and not be on top of each other, that is going to help us prevent the animals from getting sick. And obviously if they don't get sick, we don't have to give them antibiotics and we don't have to give them antibiotics. We don't have to worry as much about antibiotic resistance. But the reality is, is there is bacteria everywhere. There is bacteria on your skin, in your gut, on the ground, on the soil. It, it, bacteria is everywhere. You have 10 times more bacterial cells in your body than you actually have cells of yourself. And sheep and goats are no different. Sometimes illnesses like clostridium and other things like that are actually caused by an imbalance of bacteria in the gut. So again, very, very important that you just kind of step back to reality with me and understand that there is no one thing that you can do to help prevent your animal from getting exposure to bacteria. Now with that being said, I want to talk about another culprit of bacterial resistance to antibiotics and that is chronic underdosing of antibiotics. In some cases in the United States and abroad throughout the past few decades, we've seen instances of cattle farmers, hog farmers, sheep and goat farmers that are constantly feeding oral antibiotics to their animals at a low dose because it actually does help to improve growth and because they're keeping these animals in such nasty confined areas that they have to give it to them or they're going to get sick. You do not ever, ever, ever want to give your animal a consistently low dose of antibiotics just as a simple prophylactic. That is to say just to prevent something from happening or to improve feed conversion because that constant exposure is going to lead to antibiotic resistance and it's something you absolutely don't want to do. Make sure you check out our other helpful videos by searching for us on YouTube. I appreciate you following us. I appreciate the thumbs up and I appreciate you watching. I'm Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today and I look forward to seeing all of you again next time.